What's poppin' internet? Welcome to another episode of the Synced Up Filmcast, the show where we reel you into movie news mm-hmm. and talk about the things that we've been watching. I'm one of your host, Timothy DeRoe, and joining me this week is your boy, Mikkel Clerk. Hello. How you doing, Mikkel Clerk? I'm doing great, on this Timmy fine, On this fine Monday. We just had some good food, some mac yep. and cheese. Now I'm sleepy. Mm-hmm. I ate too much mac and cheese. Mac and cheese, some pulled pork, settled. pulled pork chat sandwiches. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There we go. Do there you we eat go. your pulled pork sandwiches with a slice of American Velveeta? I don't want to get into that right now. Is the question right of the household tonight. Um... That maybe that's the look. We don't show. need to indicate. I can talk about it for ten minutes. We, hey, we don't need to indicate who picked what. It's just a question that needs to be answered in the episode discussion tab of the Discord or in the comment section below. Let us know. Do you eat your pulled pork sandwiches with a slice of American Velveeta? And you know, just that's it. So I need to. Uh. Anyway, uh, today we're going to talk about Peter Pan, and we're going to rank it. We're going to talk about. Oh, we left. What what happened here? What do you mean? Oh, you. I, we just left it as Alice in Wonderland review from 1951. Oop! But it's actually Lady in the Tramp review. I mean, you left some Cinderella stuff in there if fair I didn't enough. catch that. So fair you enough. know, it's Peter Pan and uh, give and take. Lady in the Tramp. We're going to be talking about those things, and we're going to be ranking them in our Disney rankings. It will be at eight movies, and then uh, next week will be at ten, and then twelve, and then yada yada yada. We're also going to talk about Michael B. Jordan making a Superman HBO series, and Netflix is making a live action Pokemon game game a movie. movie. I don't know how they managed to to nail that, but we'll talk about no that. Idea. Later, but before we get into that, a little bit of housekeeping for you. If you enjoy our show, you can should consider supporting us on Patreon at patreon.com slash synced up, where for one dollar you can get access to our lovely Discord where we talk about things. Play Pokemon Unite, that's what's been happening. Mm-hmm. Talk about Lady and the Tramp and Peter Pan, talk about Game Pass, what's going on there, talk about uh bug fables and the like. We talk about a lot of things. Probably gonna talk about pulled pork the later. Pull pork. Yeah, pull pork's probably gonna get talked about later. I highly Imagine, I, I, yeah, I, that's probably a 100% uh, fact. Or for $5, you can get access to post shows of both of our shows and many more goodies, all from YouTube.com slash Synced Up Podcast and podcasting services around the globe. The globe. New episodes of this show specifically go up in those feeds and Tuesdays, 7, 7 a.m. Central, Central Time, Time Zone. Gang. Gang. You can also write into the show to SyncedUpPod at gmail.com or the reader mail submissions tab of the Discord with any mm-hmm. questions, comments, or concerns, and we may read those on the show. That's you true. should also consider following us on following us on. Following us on. Oh, so close to the end of it. I know, following us on. You should consider following us on mm-hmm. Twitter at Sync to Pod to keep up to date with all of our content from across the board. Now let's just get right into the spoils. So let's start her off with Peter Pan. We're going to start with the plot of Peter Pan, and then we're going to go in with a little review from 1953. We're going to talk about our own thoughts, and then we're going to get some thoughts from Chance and Spencer on what they thought about Peter Pan. And then we're going to slot it in the ranking of where we think it goes in relation to the other six Disney animation movies that we've watched so far. All so, right. of course, we start her out. Another disclaimer. Seems to be a classic amongst these early uh, these early films. Mm-hmm. Start that with was number two. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We get the introduction to the Darling family. You know they're popping off doing their thing. It's like oh, you I know. Need my notes. Sorry. You're looking at your notes. Okay. Um. Then you you uh they're playing pretend as Peter Pan running around the house. You know Wendy, mm-hmm. it's it's time to go up. Uh, I put dads on Wendy's ass for no reason. Just aggressively, uh, dad drags the dog out the house because the dog you know can't be the maid anymore, and he's like oh we gotta grow it was, up. It was absolute. Poppycock. Mm -hmm. Poppycock, as they say, yeah. Mm -hmm. Of course, Peter Pan shows up with Tinkerbell because he's looking for a shadow. He fights with the shadow to try to get the shadow back. Peter Pan looks like a creep, honestly. He he looks a little weird. He looks a little weird. You get the shot of like the... the, uh, It's like the teeth and stuff. Well, not that. when Yeah, maybe when he's like chilling on the balcony. Yeah. And you can just see the light across his eyes and it looks like a mask. It's a bit sus. It's a bit sus. Um, And then Peter uh, is kind of being rude. You know, he's like, hey, girl. Yeah. So the shadow on then you talk too much. Mm-hmm. Um, then you talk. You get the pixie dust scene where he's like, "Hey, you guys gotta fly." So you, what you need is a little bit of pixie dust. And then you get the classic. Oh, hold up, before you do that, they were straight up into it with Tinkerbell's figure. Yeah, they had her checking herself out in the mirror. Yeah, they had her looking at her ass. Mm-hmm. Yep, it was a whole, it was a whole thing. Mm-hmm. Then you get the flying scene, the classic. Here we go. Here we go. Um, and then everybody starts flying to Neverland. First star on the right, straight on till morning. You get the introduction of Hook and Shmi. Yo, Neverland oh. was pretty. That shot where they show you like all of Neverland, mm-hmm. yeah, with the double rainbow and everything, nice. it looks good. It was nice, it was so cool. Uh, then Hook straight up kills a guy. The guy yeah. playing the accordion. Yeah, I have Hook just murdered a man. And Hook murders a man. Then the introduction of the crocodile. You find out that he ate a clock and he's been mm-hmm. haunting Hook ever since. I like. Whenever. I like the crocodile. Yeah. It's such. I think it's a good. Um, tick tock. Tick. Tock, it's just a creative tick, character. Tick, tock, and then yeah. I don't know if you noticed, Hook was smoking two cigars. Yeah, he had it doubled up. You was smoking yeah. the tobacco. Double cheeked. Yep, double cheeked up on a Tuesday afternoon. Um, then you get the him shaving the bird instead of Hook's face. He mm-hmm. Smee's shaving, and he's like, oh, what? Oh, I don't know what happened. Um, then, of course, Tinkerbell goes down and tells the Lost Boys that they need to shoot Wendy down, as per Peter's orders. Oh, before orders. you get that, you get introduced to Codfish, which is a recurring insult. Mm-hmm. And I've, I've come to the realization that I like aquatic-based insults. Yeah. Calling someone a codfish. That's pretty... 
pretty good. It's pretty good. Yeah, it is pretty good. It's or pretty just good. any fish in general. I like yeah, the idea of it. I would agree. Um, then Tink gets banished for doing so, and he's like, you're banished forever. And then Wendy's like, no. Mm-hmm. And he's like, you're banished for a week. Um, then they play follow the leader through the field. Yeah. That's following the leader. Um, then we find out, oh, here's the reason for the disclaimer. Oh, it's yeah. the Indian scene, the Native American scene, where they're they're talking about stuff, and he's like, and ho, oh, and all that mm-hmm. stupid stuff. Um, and then you get the fact that Tiger Lily is missing, and the Lost Boys uh, are going to get burned at the stake because they have not brought Tiger Lily back. And he's like, you is that before or after the mermaids? Huh? That's before. That's before. Okay, okay. And then the mermaids are messing uh, with Wendy to drown her okay. when they go over there. They're like, hey. It was at that point I realized... Pan is a player. Yeah. He's got women. Yeah, he got women. Mm-hmm. Of course. And then they're like, hey, come swim with us. And then he's like, oh, they were only playing. And she was like, the, then the, the uh, yeah, we were just trying we were to drown just trying her. To drown her. It was like a whole thing. Um, Then the Skull Rock is where, you, oh, let's go to Skull Rock. Then you got uh, mm-hmm. you got Hook there with Smee and Tiger Lily. um, And he has, uh, has her there. And he's going to drown her when the tide comes in if she doesn't tell him where Peter's uh, hideout is. Um, And then Peter shows up and is messing with them. Shmee. Yeah, it's pretty good scene. Take her back to where she belongs. It was. I, I think at that point I was confused because it was a really good like the the voice quality for Hook and Pan is pretty good, but the voice quality for the Lost Boys. Yeah, it's pretty bad. It's just so bad, and I think I don't get why. Like I don't know. I don't either. Then you have uh, the sword fight. They get in a, they get into an mm-hmm. epic uh, epic suit sword fight. Uh, and then he almost gets ate by the crocodile. Ends up. Swimming away, yeah, getting smashed get by away. the rocks or whatever, um, and then uh, Captain Hook has a headache. The Do Not Disturb, where mm-hmm. Smee's hammering. I thought that was kind of funny um, with giving Hook a headache. Um, then it cut back to the Lost Boys and everyone. Everyone's gassing up with the natives. Yeah, classic Dis- early Disney. Mm-hmm. The boys got to get their alcohol and their tobacco. Yeah, of course they're all gassing up. They're uh, uh, then they you get the very culturally insensitive song "Why the Red Man's Red," mm-hmm. which is uh, just. It's bit, really, really bit bad. Yikes. Yeah, bit yikes. Hook captures Tink to trick her because uh, she's jealous with the iconic line, which I would actually not iconic, the pretty messed up line of you can trick a jealous woman into anything. Yeah. Which <laughs> is like a whole thing. All right. Uh, Tink ends up giving the hook, uh, giving Hook the location of Peter and then getting trapped. Um, then everyone's hanging out talking about mothers as yep. Wendy explains to the Lost Boys, hey, it's your mom. Everyone likes mother. She sings in the mother song. Then Hook shows up, captures the Lost Boys, uh, then drops a present into the... The wooden tree, the hangman's tree. It wasn't a present. It wasn't a present. Was not, not um, then Hook captures the boy. He tries to recruit him. He's like, hey, mm-hmm. you got to sign up or walk the plank. Doesn't make a ton of sense to me. They got pixie dust. They can fly. So, but hey, whatever. We're going to walk the plank. Mm-hmm. Um, then it turns out uh, it was a time bomb. And then Tink comes in and takes a time bomb straight to the face. Yeah. I thought she was <laughs> going to get a little bit out of the building. No. She gets like five feet. It gets blasted, dude. Um, yeah, Tink that was a bit. straight Shrek, dude. It was crazy. Um, then the hideout is destroyed and, and Tink starts going out. Um, then Peter Pan shows up to save the day as everyone's walking the plank. So do you not recall there being a thing with Tinkerbell where it's like, we have to believe in Tinkerbell or she's going to die. And every chance, I, I believe. I, I believe. think that's from the live action. Yes. I think this movie is the only time they don't do that, mm-hmm. which is weird. Yeah. Um, the hideout is uh, destroyed. Pan shows up to save the day. Uh, P- Peter uh, fights Hook man to man. Without mm-hmm. flying, I'm not gonna break any rules. I'm gonna fly. I gave my word. Um, uh, then he wins, makes Hook run from the croc once again. Then you get the classic ha, 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 as he skips across the mm-hmm. water, which I thought was which was very funny. Uh, and then they fly the boat. They put pixie dust all over the boat. Fly the boat back to London. The ship flies away, and the dad and the mom comes around, see the ship, and he's like, "Oh, I remember the ship from when I was young in my younger days." Mm-hmm. And that's the end of the movie. A couple of my notes here. Um, I remember Tinkerbell having a voice for some reason. That's probably another case of the. There's multiple iterations of this, and I don't I think disappointed Tinkerbell it. has ever had a voice. I don't know, or maybe I'm tripping. I don't know. I think you're tripping on that one. And then I said, uh, "Why did she have the shadow and shit? It makes no sense." <laughs> like uh, she's like, "Oh, yeah, we just had the well, shadow." Well, because it's all imaginary. It's yeah. all in her head. But it, then it's not in the end. What? You think it's in her head, and then they all see the ship in the sky. Well, I think that's just acknowledging that their own sense of imagination that they used to have when they were a child. Yeah, but they all actually... collectively see the ship that they just flew in on. Yeah. In the sky. It's some metaphor. I don't know, man. And then I put the plank shouldn't scare anyone when they can all fly, bro. Pixie dust wears off. Sure. People know this. Okay. This is a known <laughs> fact. <laughs> all right. That's all you had? That's all I had. Uh, yeah, my last note was I want to play Sea of Thieves. Yeah, <laughs> I did too. During the pirates, anytime the pirates are on, I was like, I just want to play Sea of Thieves. Yeah, I just want to be playing Sea of Thieves. Um... It was for, number one. Wendy shouldn't have to have done dealt with any of that. Yeah, 
she she was getting bossed around. Yeah. It was not a fun time for let's, her. Let's, the lads, maybe. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. Let's read this review from 1953 before yeah, we get into the, 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 our thoughts and the fans' thoughts. So from 1953 from the Times, from Peter Pan. There may be some scrupulous objection to Walt Disney's Peter Pan on the ground that it does not hold precisely to the pristine spirit of the J.M. Barry play. Mr. Disney's animated cartoon of the widely loved children's fantasy is frankly and boldly created in what may be best described as Disney style. The, we've seen this before in mm-hmm. these types of reviews. The characters are drawn and animated in such a way that they readily recall not only the appearance but the behavior of familiars in other Disney films. That is to say, the well-bred Wendy is a virtual duplicate of the prim Snow White. The pirate Smee is the same as the dwarf happy and babe uh, and baby michael is a dopey who talks captain hook the horrendous villain is jay worthington uh, foul fellow and plumes and peter himself is reminiscent of some of the boys in pinocchio as for the famous berry fairy the crystalline and luminous tinkerbell she is new she is as nubile and coquettish as the maiden centaurs in fantasia what's more mr disney has completely eliminated from his film the spirit of guileless crude cred 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 words credulity 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 i don't know no, it's no, there's no S. Can, can you look this up? C-R-E-D-U-L-I-T-Y. I like Credu- that this, this is a vocab lesson as well. Credulity. There's a teacher in the building. Credulity? Credulity? Hey, credulity? Ma, what is the word credulity? Credulity? C-R-E-D-U-L-I-T-Y. Credulity? Credulity. But isn't that just credibility? How do you pronounce that, Jordan? Credulity? And what's it mean? I mean, your reviews are... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's weird. S- see, we're learning. Well, they do say guileless credu- cred- cred- the gullibleness of fairy Credulity? magic. I Credulity? guess. Credulity. Credulity. They- okay. Mr. Disney has completely eliminated from his film the spirit of the guileless and credulity and fairy magic that prevails in the play. Jeez, man. Maybe this is like ridiculousness. Yeah, I guess so. The Disney inventions are as skillful and clever as they have ever been, perhaps even more so in some cases as in the encounter of Captain Hook with the crocodile. This episode in the story has been worked out in burst of a violent farce with Hook struggling frantically to stay out of the ferocious old crocodile's pink maw. The colors, too, are more exciting, and the technical features of the job, such as the synchronization of voices with the animation of lips, are very good. Tinkerbell is a bit of vulgarity with her bathing beauty form and attitude, but even she, like Peter's harem of doting mermaids, is cleverly and expertly drawn. Wendy and the other children, plus Nana, the nursemaid dog, are merely good, pious Disney creations in a first-class feature-length Disney cartoon. See, I don't understand. In the first half of this, you sound, it sounds like they think it's shit, and then you come into the I back can never half, tell. And, and you're like, oh, I don't know. Maybe it's actually good. I, I usually read the whole thing and trim it down because they're long. They're long. Yeah. And I don't, I don't want to sit here reading a review from the 1950s for 10 minutes, but I read them and I still have no idea where they stand. I wish they had a number system back then. Mm-hmm. That way I could know if they liked it or not. Yeah. But, uh, no, that's a bit, that's a bit weird. Yeah. And then of course, Chance writes in his What's thoughts Chance on Peter say? Pan. I was never too fond of this movie, but it has its moments. The alligator with the clock in its stomach used to give me nightmares, so I may have some bias there. I've always wanted to grow my mustache out like Captain Hook and have yet to succeed, but one day I'll get there. Overall, this movie isn't as impactful for me as the name might suggest. Neverland always seemed like a place I never wanted to go. Okay. Spencer writes in, I was never... Wait. You've goofed somewhere. Did I goof somewhere? I did. Did you copy Spencer's twice? I copied Spencer's twice, so good thing we have these. So that was Spencer's. Oh, Spencer thought. Uh, Spencer of course, thoughts. Chance wouldn't say something so, so, so pious. Okay, pious. here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. That's all me. That's all me. So Spencer wrote in and said those things. Chance wrote in and said, I don't think there was anything special about this movie. I thought it was a mid-tier movie with good elements like Captain Hook and the Alligator, but overall, I thought it was pretty boring and racist as hell. I I think I lean more with... Uh, I mean, they both seem to not have a great... Uh, feeling for this movie, and I think I, I lean in with the lads on this one. Yeah, mid. Okay, mid movie. I think. Bring up the list, Jordan. I don't. There wasn't like a great part about it. Like it was just Hook. Hook's a. I, he's a great villain. Iconic. The the pirates are cool, but everything else, I don't care about the Lost Boys. It's like the Lost Boys. They're, they're, why, but that's like the whole. That's like the namesake of of Corday's album. Yeah. The album's great. The Lost Boys themselves, oh, come on, no man. redeeming qualities. Okay, so what do we got here? We got Cinderella, Pinocchio, Alice in Wonderland, Bambi, Dumbo, and Snow White. We now have Peter Pan. Let me go into the Mind Palace for just a second. Hum, the goggles are on. Hum, where would I put Peter Pan? I know exactly where it's gone. Where would I put Peter Pan? Okay, I got a spot. Above Bambi, below Alice. I got, oh. I got below Bambi, above Dumbo. Oh. Let's see where the boys put it so we can 
we can put this this put this down. I can't hear you. Yeah, I did. We did. We did. Yeah, T- Tinkerbell liked to show off her hips. Yep. Of course. Okay, so I put what Peter did Pan. You say? Huh? What? What did you say? To <laughs> okay, I wanted to put Peter Pan at number five. Uh huh. So I wanted to put it at number four. And you wanted to put it at number four. Well, they put in their whole list here, so that kind of. So they both put Peter Pan at number six in the grand scheme of things. So they so if I remove Lady and the Tramp, um, Spencer puts it at second to last. If I remove Lady and the Tramp from from um, Chances, he puts it third to last, which leaves us in the exact. No, you put you put fourth to last. I put second to last. No, I put third to last. You put third to last. You I put just wanted about Bambi. Well, that's fourth to last. Because oh, Snow yeah. White, Dumbo, Bambi. So, so I think we should so put it in the third spot. Because I wanted it at two. Chance wants it at two. Spencer wants it at three. And you wanted it at four. So I think we should. Why are you counting upwards? Well, fourth that's to so last. No, ra- third to last. Second to last. Why don't you just say I want it in fourth. You want it in fifth. They well, want cause, it cause in sixth. Because I'm thinking. Because I, I can't say they want it at six. Because they put in their whole list with eight. Our list is at seven right now. It's not at eight. They have Lady and the Tramp in there. That's well, why no. I'm, remove Lady and the Tramp. They both still want it at six, right? Well, if you remove Lady and the Tramp, Chance oh. wants it at five. If you remove Lady and the Tramp. Um, Spencer, Spencer wants, wants it at six. six. Yeah, so five. Yeah, so put it at five. Man, no way this movie's worse than Bambi. Bambi was not a great movie. I liked Bambi. You like Bambi better than this? Yeah, I did. Bambi's not that good. I like Bambi, man. The Lost Boys kind of racist, bro. The Lost, the Boys? Lost Boys? They're just animals. They're all racist. They're definitely movie. humans. Well, I mean, but they're humans dressed up as animals. What makes them racist? The, 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 bro, the, the whole Indian... The whole Indian oh, race. well... I think Disney. Okay. Well, I mean, yeah, Walt Disney was a notorious racist man. They just pulled up. Can we just put Tinkerbell a little behind the list or no? <laughs> we need to. Uh, no, right I think we need to start a second list, which is like the princesses, the the, the second, the second, the sidekick character, sidekick character. We might could get into that. Peter Pan gets a. Yeah, Peter Pan yeah. does get a ton, like four or five. We looked it up. Within there was a Peter Pan movie in two thousand two, two thousand three, and two thousand four. Jeez. And so I think that's why people's memories of the of this so movie are crazy so crazy and wildly yeah. different. You put yeah. Peter Pa. Peter Pa. No, it's Peter oh, Pan. Oh, it's the it's the curse. Anyway, so now let's talk Peter about pa. Lady and the Tramp. Let's Lady start with the plot. The so we start we open up the movie cold open, literally. It's cold. Yeah. Lady <laughs> and the Tramp. Did, did you write that joke? No. No. <laughs> Lady and the Tramp. Uh, so Lady's in a gift box. She's in a she's in a box. Oh, hey, before you even do that, harmful stereotypes again in this one. Yeah, classic. Another disclaimer. Another disclaimer. Yeah. Um, so Lady uh, is in a box. Opens a the box. box. It's Lady. She tries to climb the stairs. Wide screen, by the way. Oh yeah, we're in wide screen now. Everybody starts talking, and Lady gets a new collar. That happens. She's, She's adorable. Yeah, she is. She is very adorable. You get the introduction to the hound dog who can't smell. You get the introduction of J- Jack, Jack, Jock. I can't remember. You get the introduction to Tramp. This all happens right, like right after the other. Um, then mm-hmm. the dog pound shows up. Here come the dog pound. Wee woo. Oh, we dodge the dog pound. Don't worry about dog it. Tramp him. can't get got. Uh, he's then too G- good. Jim Deer, you find out he's not so excited to see the dog anymore, and she, she's wondering why. Oh, because darling, having a baby. Those names cute because she calls him Jim Deer, and he says darling. Hey, darling, and so she thinks it's Jim Deer and darling, which I thought was cute. Um, and then Tramp and Lady finally meet up. That happens. Mm-hmm. Then she, uh, Lady finds out. Well, everybody finds out it's a boy. They're having a boy. Then the family's like, we're gonna go on vacation, right? Mm-hmm. Watch the baby. Big old time skip. Just kind of happens there. Yeah. Um, then Sarah, I put her name was Sarah, right? Auntie Aunt, Sarah. Aunt Sarah. Yeah. Uh, she locks the lady. She locks the lady out of the baby room. Won't let yeah. her in because she thinks she's getting scared. And then we get the the reason for the disclaimer: the Siamese cats. Mm-hmm. But they're it's, it's really bad. Yeah. <laughs> it's just really bad. Like poor taste. Yeah. Poor taste. Uh, like Chinese stereotype thing with super slanted eyes and all that jazz. You know, classic stuff from this old Disney era. Then lady gets muzzled because she runs around and the cats frame her for the stuff that, mm-hmm. that they did and then the aunt's like they're my these are my best cats yeah. so lady gets muzzled and she she yeets she yeets to the street as i put it yeah she runs away um and then who uh as as you put it lady now belongs to the streets dirty docks dirty docks in particular <clears throat> of course and then tramp uh defends lady in an epic 3v1 brawl with some hound dogs that was impressive he he was outsized outnumbered yeah and he still won um, then, Love. Yeah, of course. Then they roll up to the, the zoo, but no dogs allowed. For no. That, that was a, I'm pretty sure they could have just walked around anyways. Yeah, but no. They had to cause a whole scene. He had scene. a clever plan. He had to cause a whole scene and, and distract the guard. Um, then you get the interaction with the beaver, and he's like, mm-hmm. hey, man, you, you, we'll help you. The beaver like straight destroys some fences in the zoo. Mm-hmm. He's like, hey, man, 
we'll give you this muzzle thing. It'll help you move the log, but you got to get it off. So he gets the thing off, and then it actually does help him move the log. He mm-hmm. fixes it. Boom. That happens. Then Tramp teaches Lady about not sticking to one family. He's like, look, man, I can go here on a Tuesday. I can go here on a Wednesday. I can go here on a Thursday. I get treated to, to the best beef. Yeah. You know, to, Tony's, right? Uh, which is where we go next. The Tony's. Tony's. And then we get the Wonderful spaghetti. place. Uh-huh. I want to go. I want to go. He seems like a loving guy. Mm-hmm. And he cooks two dogs some spaghetti. He doesn't. He makes his... He works his guy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He busts out the accordion. The accordion, yeah. And yes. the candles and stuff and the breadsticks. And so they're at Tony's. You get the iconic. You've seen it everywhere. Everybody mm-hmm. knows it. Everybody loves it. Lady and the Tramp spaghetti scene. I think we make that a Patreon goal. Me and you the spaghetti scene. <laughs> $100? Just fifty. <laughs> Why'd you lower it? <laughs> best I could do. I was 25. looking to you to make it higher, and I lower. Best I could do is twenty five. Oh man! Um, then they chase some chickens. He's like, "Hey man, we're just yeah. gonna mess with the chickens." Uh, then lady gets got by the pound while they run off. Yeah, she gets nabbed. Then you get a full like five minute scene of dogs just howling, bro. And clearly in a rhythm or a song, but that I, I couldn't, couldn't identify. It. It. I couldn't identify. And it was just like, how long is this gonna go? It's way too damn long. But then there was actually a good. Song in the pound. Yeah, it did. There, yeah. there was one. After you that. learned that mm-hmm. Butch, whatever you want to call him, he's yeah. a tramp. Then it gets a little dark when you find out Nutsy's taking the long walk. Oh yeah, which means he's going to die. Yeah, the which is a little die. weird. Um, and then you get the song. He's a tramp. He's a yeah. scoundrel. Of course, you know all Good the lady, song. all the ladies love him. Um, lady gets out, but is relegated to the doghouse now. She's stuck in there. And then Tramp shows up with a bone to try to, you know, win her back. And turns yeah. out, you know, he gets fully rejected. Right. He's in the doghouse. Yeah, he's in the doghouse. Mm-hmm. Then the rats show up. A rat shows up. Apparently, that's a really the, big deal about this rat. For the main reason. villain. Yeah, the main villain of the film. There's one rat. The rat. Then Tramp shows back up, and she's like, oh, you got to help me, dude. The rat is in the house. Because the rat like, instinctively it. knew to find the baby. Exactly, because it's a rat, right? And so then the ant thinks the dogs messed all the things up when they're trying to save the rat. Mm-hmm. Not save the rat. Save, save the, the baby. baby from the rat. So she's like, oh, the dogs must have done it all, right? It's a whole thing. Then... uh they they get they she gets tramp taken by the pound mm-hmm. lady gets uh, locked up they or whatever. quote destroy that dog destroy that dog for me please right mm-hmm. um and then the hound dog regains a sense of smell and with jock goes to find the wagon they hunt it down they hunt mm-hmm. the wagon down for some reason everybody shows up to the wagon I don't know why everyone is here the whole family were you not there when when lady showed the rat to the the family? The family that had just seen the random stray dog in passing realized yeah. that the random stray dog had done all and saved the day? Yes. Yeah. Okay. But, like, they see the rat. <laughs> yeah. So they put it together. <laughs> uh, yeah, they really connected that. Common 1950s trope oh, okay. if you didn't know. Yeah, I got the... Okay. Yeah, they really they really put that together. Then, um, I typed this because I was typing it as it went. I put hound dog dies because they really set it up like he dies. Yeah, I, I was really worried that but my But it man. turns out he doesn't die, which is weird. And it was it was sus because he died, and then two seconds later he wasn't dead. He just had a he just had a, like a little yeah. a little cast, and then everybody got kids. Yep. And then a couple kids, of my notes I put much. in all caps. We in widescreen now. Yeah. Widescreen, put, big guys. This is another instance of animation turning up another notch. Yeah, that was same I note I put. I think we're gonna see twenty more times before yep. we finish this whole thing. That'll be in all my notes probably. I said, "Why did baby look like that?" Yeah. Uh, when I it put was in lady the cradle, adorable, <laughs> baby ugly. <laughs> a little weird. And then I said, "This is the first movie like in the Disney." Like sphere where the music was not synced up to all the movements. Yeah, like it I wasn't was near the some, beginning. It was in some aspects, but in terms of like the entire movie having yeah. music, music accenting movements didn't happen. I, ha- I have this note here that says "No human fank Vicky pollo ss." What does that mean? I don't know. I think I was trying to type "No human faces" and then got distracted. <laughs> That's my guess. This is Teo's favorite movie, by the way. Um, oh yeah, he was he was engaged. He was very engaged. He was he was definitely watching. He was locked in. What else? De- definitely some salesmanship going on there. Um, what with Yale? Well, no, it, no, when they, <laughs> no. When they were selling the beaver, the mat, the mask. Oh yeah. Or the the whatever you want to call it, the muzzle. The dude was a salesman. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you agree, but the thank you special delivery. the Tony scene is my favorite Disney scene in the movie so far. The Tony? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think this movie would have been close. It wouldn't have been worse than Snow White, but I was gonna put it second to last. Until the spaghetti scene, in which case I was like, "Oh, I might." Be I think it's higher. better than Dumbo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no way you put I, I, I was Dumbo. ranking it way low until the yeah. spaghetti scene, and I was like, Ooh, "Spaghetti scene made this movie spaghetti. pretty good." Yeah, of course. Now let's read a review from the Times. What they got back say. in the 1950s for Lady and the Tramp. So, Lady and the Tramp, we might mention, is not the best he has done in his in this line. It is a coyly romantic story done with animals. The sentimentality is mighty, and the use of the cinemascope size does not make for any less awareness of the thickness of the goo. What does that mean, dog? 
I was thinking, like, the uh, goo? Uh, you know what? Pause. Let me run this back. It is a coyly romantic story done with animals. The sentimentality is mighty, and mm -hmm. the use of the cinemascope size does not make for any less awareness of the thickness of the goo. Is it trying to say... Is it calling the sentimentality the goo? That carries the you through the movie? The sentimentality is mighty, and the use of the cinemascope size does not make for any less awareness of the thickness of the goo. The sentimentality is mighty, and the use of the cinemascope size does not make for any less awareness of the thickness of of the goo. I think I maybe what he's trying to say the is, mighty, is that the the dogs the you're sentimental to the dogs and the the way how they make the movie does not make you less the, aware of that. Of you're very aware that the, the dogs are cute. I don't know. Goo? Was there like some because okay, let's do some context clues here. The sentimentality is mighty, which is just a thing we're saying in here. Mm -hmm. But then we go into talk of technology at the time. The cinemascope size does not make for any less awareness of the thickness of the goo. Now, did old cameras or did old, I'm did looking old it up. animation styles I'm looking it use up. goo? Cinema. What is it? Scope? Saw it? No. In terms, of, in terms of old animation tactics, did they use goo? I'm putting, I, I typed cinemascope and goo. What do we get? Nothing. 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 Just dimensions. Did you know what? Let me let me pull up a Google. I'm gonna do one quick run here. Vamp for a second. Yeah. The thickness of the goo. The the cinemascope size does not make for any less awareness of the thickness of the goo. We went widescreen. So this was the first movie with the widescreen. So I, I guess you want to see use a different cinemascope size. Cinemascope is a proper noun here. What are you looking? Goo. It, keeps wanting to, it will not let me search goo. It keeps wanting to change it to good. good. And I can't say search for this instead. Hold why, on. Why can you not? I'll help you. I'll help you. Goo used in cinema. What is screen goo? Oh, hold up. Hold up. Screen goo is used to create rear projection screens, front projection screens, 3D cinema. Screen. Sc Screens goo video protection coatings are a result of many years of research and development. So the okay, so what they're talking about is they finally went to the widescreen, mm -hmm. but that doesn't you you're it doesn't get away of the, of the goo of the goo of the when screen. you go to the theater. Yeah, they had to use goo, goo back then. What the man? Okay, whatever, man. Fifties were a time. <laughs> it also magnifies the animation so that flaws and poor foreshortening. What is what is what is that? It's saying that you can see the flaws more because it's more wide. But sure, was foreshortening. Whatever. It also magnifies the animation so that flaws and poor foreshortening are more plain. Unfortunately and surprisingly, the artist's work is below par in this film, where Mr. Disney's feature cartoons usually have a certain literate originality, at least. That's just not true. Literate? Like, they're not original stories. No, but the cartoons are... Okay, whatever. This one <laughs> it falls, uh, falls rather patly into a pseudo-boy-meets-girl groove. Okay. The musical score has Tinkle and it's... What? And it is rather nicely sung by Miss Lee, the Mellow Men, George Givett, and several others... Or probably Gavo, and several others who are the voices of the dogs. Mr. Disney's affection for dogs is more cert sugary than his appreciation of mice and ducks, but this should suit the taste of many people who go for lap dogs and such. <laughs> I don't think he liked the movie. I don't think he did either. It's impossible to tell with all these weird words from back in the day. So anyway, Spencer writes in, about Lady and the Tramp, and he says, Only scene that comes to mind for me is the spaghetti scene where they kiss. Everything else is very forgettable, but I'm pretty sure it was a huge leap in animation for Disney with this movie. It's worth noting. He Spencer, does say snooze. Yeah, he does say snooze. So, you know, classic. And then Chance writes in, This one surprised me. I didn't remember from much from when I was a kid besides the iconic scene mm -hmm. and was expecting it to be another mid-movie, but I really enjoy this. I love the main cast of characters. Tramp is the goat. Lady is adorable. Jock and Trusty are so lovable. I wish Trusty. I could adopt them. And Aunt Sarah sucks so much. When Trusty Great. got hit, my jaw hit the floor. Mm -hmm. What a traumatic 15 seconds for a kid's movie I wasn't ready for. Overall, I thought this was one of the best movies we watched so far, but I may be biased because I love dogs. You, uh, you could use Chance's review word for word, and that's pretty much what I'm going to say, too. I just didn't know the dog's name was Trusty. Yeah. I don't know where they say that. Bring up the list. Bro, no, you, they didn't, you didn't get that after Old Reliable. You couldn't get his it. His dad his was Old Reliable, was and his name's Trusty? No, well, it makes sense. His nose is Old Reliable. Oh. oh. What? Wait, no, it's not. Yes, it is. Old Reliable is his nose. That doesn't make any I sense. I never told you about Grandpappy Old Reliable. He always used to say his nose talks. Yeah, what? I know. I'm with Mike on this one. Bro. No, because... 
whenever he goes, he to, talks about grandpappy. Yeah, whenever he starts to hunt for the wagon, he says, "Oh, reliable's back." Like, no, no. I'm pretty sure he named his nose after his grandpa because his grandpa was like a good hound. Well, then his grandpa's still old, reliable. Well, yeah, sure, but yeah, in the the scope of the, the cinema scope of the things, this was like. See, you just use cinema scope. <laughs> Whatever. I just like that. that that's a nice two word little cinema scope. Oh, do, I any, do I have any more notes on this one? I, don't, I feel like. Bring up the list. It starts being up. Oh. I can't see you. Uh, we can't see you. Good. So here we go. We got the list. Where do we rank Lady and the Tramp? This, so. Hmm. Yeah. Is Spencer actually rewatching these? Or is he doing this? I think the only one he's rewatching is some. Alice. He's rewatching some okay. and some he's doing just from memory. I don't know if that. Okay. Like, I don't think his review carries merit on this one. No. Because this one was definitely one of those ones, like, if I had just gone off memory, I'd agree with him. Yeah. But this movie's good. This movie is good. I, this one of my favorites so far. For me, number two. Yeah. Okay. I mm. was there. I was, yeah. well, actually, number one, to be honest. On well, no, I don't think it overtakes Cinderella. I don't like Cinderella that much. I think Cinderella's too okay. cool. Well, I put it number four. Wow. Wow. I think it's above Ban- Bambi, below, actually, actually, no, I put it number three. I think it's above Alice, below Pinocchio. Is where I put it. Well, it's definitely two for me, three for you, two for me, two for you, and then it's two for Chance as well. And then Spencer's doesn't really matter because Spencer didn't watch this one. He put it at the very bottom, but he didn't watch the movie. He very clearly states the only scene I can remember is this, so it's hard to like really take that into account. So I would, yeah, I would say it goes at two. Let's go. Finally, I win a concession. I I'm starting to like this list. It's shaping up. Pinocchio holding on strong. Definitely yeah, the right. highest up of the old movies. Now, I definitely think though, these movies are about to start. The list dropped. <laughs> they are. The list yeah. is now: Snow White at number eight, Dumbo at number seven, Peter Pan at number six, Bambi at number five, Alice in Wonderland at number four, Pinocchio at number three, Lady and the Tramp at number two, and Cinderella at number one. The following movies coming up this week are: um, Can we get a tattoo of whatever movie's sleep- number one at the end on our ass? It's gonna be Moana. Uh, Sleeping Beauty. Hundred bucks. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> just to, just for the cause? Just for the cause, yeah. Oh, no, make make that one a Patreon goal. Next next week's movies, this week's movies are going to be Sleeping Beauty and then One Hundred and One Dalmatians. You know, a couple you just of more. Did you say Moana would be the top of the list at the yes. end? Yeah, I think so. That's my prediction. Knowing me and him, probably. Y'all are overhyping that movie. No, that movie is fantastic. I, uh, wait, I'm just giving an early prediction. I think Moana is going to be number one. There is zero bad things with that movie. Zero bad things about the movie. And Lin Manuel, good animation. Ocean, the green rock. and blue colors. The, the rock. rock. Dude. <laughs> like, come on, man. Yes. Anyway, so yeah, Sleeping Beauty, and then 101 Down. High hopes for either of those movies? No, I think well, they're gonna both I, be. I have an excitement. To watch 101 Dalmatians because because of Cruella, because of Cruella. Mm-hmm. and then but once we follow that, I'm excited to finish these because then we start to get into a lot of movies that I haven't seen, um, like Oliver and Company, oh, so uh, good. The Rescuers, oh, so Sword good. in the Stone, the Black Cauldron. We're all the in the teens. The Aristocats. Those are all That's movies that I legitimately one, watch it. Yeah. That I legitimately have not seen though, so I'm very excited to get into the teens. Um, but yeah, so this this week, ones. Sleeping Beauty, 101 Dalmatians. Watch problem. those. Write your stuff in. What's the problem with Sleeping Beauty? And Hundred One Dimensions, I feel like their new age movies are better than the original. Like I think oh, yeah. is specifically with those two. Oh, yeah, yeah. If you take any other two, I think you're wrong. Yeah, yeah, but these those two are just such a good live action. Yeah, those are really good live action ones. Mm-hmm. Anyway, that's it for our ranking of the Disney movies. Time to talk about a couple of news items this week. So they're making a Dragon Ball movie. What is it called again? You said. So, it's called Off the Heels of Dragon Ball Super Broly. Good, well animated, um, just top notch Dragon Ball movie. Good anime movie. Good name. Solid name, Dragon Ball Super Broly. Broly yeah. We know what's going on. Exactly, Broly is gonna be there. They called this movie Dragon Ball Super Superhero. <laughs> <laughs> what am I supposed Dragon to do Ball with that Super information? Superhero. And for the promo images, they showed off Piccolo and G- Goku's granddaughter. Okay, going to school. We're going to school. Piccolo been hanging out with the Goku family. What you mean? Ever since Goku beat his ass. His granddaughter, bro, get some friends. Grandpappy. Come on. What? Dude. No, wait. His No, he's like best friends with Go, uh, Gohan. What do you mean? So why is he hanging out with the granddaughter? Because it's Gohan's daughter. I guess that's fair. Why didn't you say that then? Why did you say Goku's granddaughter? Because that's also true. I don't know. I don't know what's happening. Most people know Goku. What? I don't know what's happening. Yeah, he <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Netflix got the rights to a Pokemon live action movie. D- this one's... 
Money, I guess. I don't know. How? Could what? it be good? Could be. Detective Pikachu is good. Yeah. It's a good movie. Just good. I don't know if I want it to be that style of live action. Oh, yeah, do it. Go ahead. But I just feel like if it's not like a Detective Pikachu kind of story, like if it just, if they try and just tell a regular Pokemon story with that kind of animation. Just tell us po- just tell us a story in the Pokemon world. But I feel don't like tell us they're a gonna... regular Pokemon story. I don't want those. Just tell us a no, story. No, but in I'm the saying Pokemon I think world. that's what we're going to get. Yeah, you're probably right. Is we're just going to get season 1 of the anime. Yeah. In movie. In live action. In live, yeah. I don't want that. Like the Dragon Ball movie. If it is just a combat movie. Yeah, if it's just a cool animated Pokemon show. Cool. It's 25th anniversary. Go Pokemon pop off. They got money. Go for it. Yeah. One last thing in the streaming world. HBO has given Michael B. Jordan and his production company um, the the go-ahead to work on a black Superman series. Yes. With Val Zod, which is nice. Which is the name of the black Superman, I guess. Okay. So, cool. Cool. I'm excited. I like Michael B. Jordan. More reason to use HBO Max, I guess. Of course. Another hit for Netflix. Of course. Wait, what? I, like I, Every time another streaming oh, service another, gets a good like show. Another tink on another day. Yeah, Netflix okay, okay, okay. loses yeah. value. And then all we got this week is a new Dune trailer in the terms of the trailer sections. Go ahead and bring that up. Jordan. 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 We got a, Timothy we got a, Chalamet. Zendaya. Zendaya. That's all I know. And there's a couple other notables, but I don't remember. Because I, I was locked in with this movie off the jump. I got the board game over on the table. I know zero things about Dune besides it's in a desert. It's on a... It's, okay. Desert planet, right? Whatever. Hit what? Planet. Am I wrong? What is that? It's not, it's like, not that's a desert. the whole planet is not a desert. Planet I, no, I don't know, I don't know shit about doing When you go to Sa- the Sahara Desert, Shh. it doesn't make the whole planet. Shh. Rolling over the sands, you can see Quiet spice ease. in the air. Quiet in the sea. The outsiders ravage our lands in front of our eyes. The desert faction. I wonder why they're called that. So dudes get smacked. Their cruelty to my people. Batista. Batista. Yes, I need one more. One one more uh, uh, notable. What's to become of our world? Yeah. (sighs) Timothy, your boy Tim. Shalomon. Shalomon. Duncan, can I trust you something? Yes, always. Is that Momoa? Yes, it is. I've been having dreams. Wow. About a girl on Arrakis. On the road in me. Dreams make good stories. I don't know. I've never read the Dune books. But I do have the Dune board game on my on my, t- uh, my uh, table. Some muscle? And I'm hoping to play that in the next few days. No. Like, we are the House of Trades. There is it's no just very sci fi. Oh, him, dude? Tom. There is no faith that we betray. It's just sci fi, bro. Sci fi politics. Smile, Gurney. Like, it's like smile. the people re- really. The, <coughs> the reason people really like Dune is like peace to the world. It's like another one of those things like Star Wars. Except. Same type of thing. I know you. There's only a way in my mind. Is that you? Is it still to face your fears? To write a new sign. Uh, and people gravitate. It's damn near impossible. Okay, I'm just making sure. You haven't met Harkness before. They're not yeah, human. They're brutal. Yeah, I think they are right. Duke's son sees too much. I think everything will be delivered in this. This is why you kill, un- kill them all. I mean, there's some cool stuff happening in Australia. God in heaven. I don't think I like the colors. It's brown. Because I didn't like, I didn't like Mad Max. Bro, that's I liked everything else about the movie. That was so stylish. Yeah, that was Mad Max. I, I know it's a stylish choice. It doesn't want to have to like it. It's a good movie. It looks like the demons. I just didn't like it. That's cool. That I was tight. What if I'm not the future of House Atreides? Is that a oh, great man yeah. doesn't seek yes. lead? Yes. Okay. He's called um, to him. Like, no. But if your answer is no, his name is. I have something from before you got related to, to say after this is over. <laughs> <laughs> My son. What? If anything happens. It's a long trail. I know. How much longer we got? Protect yeah. Paul. Wait. My life. Parker, of course. Pretty Parker, of course. Right? But it's it's only together we stand a chance. I'm not sure. I, again, I told you, I don't know shit. I don't know shit. Okay. Power Rangers? That's what I was about to say. It's also, I'm just a sucker for big fight scenes like that. Yeah. Like massive battles. Also, I love that. So, Can I 
I've seen that completely unrelated thing now. Wait, hold up. But pause this. Who is Oscar Isaac? Thank you. Okay. Jeez. All right. Here's here's my completely unrelated thing. Yeah. I saw a TikTok that said it, it's the thing like which two movie scenes give you the same vibes, and it wasn't what it was, but it made me think of one, and it's the Thanos snap mm-hmm. in Skadoosh from Kung Fu Panda. That's yeah, classic. And I, I can't even remember what theirs was, mm-hmm. but Skadoosh was too good for me. What is happening? What, what is, is happening going on? off screen? What's up? Share with the class. We're only doing a show. That looks like the moon. It's round and in space, bro. Yeah, come on, bro. But then it's got another round circle. That's because the, the Death Star is supposed to look like the moon. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Death Star no, looks the like Death Star moon. looks like a moon. No, it just looks like a Death Star. Bro, you're tripping. You're oh tripping. Oh, my goodness. Now it's time to talk about the things we've been watching. Of course, we've been watching Dave. And I Dave. thought this week's episode, superb. Starring Doja Cat? Superb. No. Nope. Uh, that was last week's. This was the Double XL Freestyle episode. Bro, I'm so... Why does this happen every week? Yeah, this is the Double XL Freestyle episode where you get the flashbacks to before mm-hmm. he was a rapper. Mm-hmm. Fantastic episode. My bad. Also is good. And I think it's my favorite one so far. I don't know. Doja Cat is still my favorite. I think. It's a really good... Really this good. one hurt. Yeah, it was... It wasn't funny. No. Really then, at all. They're so good at telling multiple stories without having the story focus on it at all. Because mm-hmm. I forget what her name is. But the the actress who's in this episode a lot, one of Dave's best friends. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's a big part of this episode, and you learn a lot about her story. Mm-hmm. You get some backstory on her. As you well. get a lot, and like you you see how she's treated at work, mm-hmm. just like by side comments that aren't the main point of the shot. Yeah, but like tell a lot about the story if you're just paying attention. And her to relationship what with Dave. On. Yeah, and like the come up with Dave, mm-hmm. and how she's supposed to fit into all of that, and that's very good. I I mean, it's the continual we're seeing Dave fall apart. Mm-hmm. You know, Lil Dicky, um, in general, it seems like he's pretty on top of it. Yeah. But, like, I, it hurt. Not, like, when we see this. Yeah, you see him, like, kind of crumbling. Yeah, I'm like, it, his th- is the come up is going to happen? to keep up, you know? Yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm excited for next, uh, next week's episode. Mm-hmm. And, of course, watching iCarly again some more. Still hitting. Still funny. Um, I'll give more, like, really, really in-depth thoughts when the full thing is out. Did you know that show is directed by Mr. Mosby? No. That's kind of wild. Yeah, a little executive bit producer as well. Yeah, weird. Crazy. Kind of weird. And then, of course, I watched the rest of Atypical Season 4. You did? I cannot iterate, reiterate, iterate, reiterate all the stuff. How good that show is, bro. Holy shit. That show is awesome. Maybe one day I'll get back into it. I mean, I think, I think as, I don't know if, it, you know, I'll show you guys our headphones in, but... The, it's it's fantastic. Me and Adrian finished it. Uh, it was that Sunday. We watched like four episodes. We stayed up till super late, like one thirty yeah. in the morning. I had work the next day. It was it was terrible, and I was suffering. But a typical season S- four. Some of the best TV on Netflix at the moment, bro. Yes, it's great. It's fantastic. It's wholesome. Mm-hmm. It warms your heart. It makes you uncomfortable. It makes you laugh. It makes you think about what it's like. The cat. The cat, please. Tell it makes you think know. about what it's like to just live life and to see other people live life and how they live it. And it yeah. just, every episode teaches you some sort of lesson with life and something that you should carry forward. All of the characters are great. They're all lovable. Mm-hmm. They're all great. All the stories, the the stories with those characters are great. It took the worst part of that show that I thought, which was the boyfriend. Took him out of it, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, the Evan character. I didn't really like his character. He's like in, he got like a total runtime of about 55 seconds in this whole season. So it's great. Nice. Um, but yeah, it's, it's. It's just great, dude. The show's great. And I thought the ending, it's a start to finish. It's an ending. It's not mm-hmm. a cliffhanger or anything. It's an ending. It's done. I thought it was great. Good. And it made me cry. You, so you think this might just be the end then? No, it is the end. Oh, okay. Netflix Confirm. has stated that it is the end, yes. Damn. Um, And it it just made me cry. Like mm-hmm. the last three episodes, I was just like, damn, this, wow. This was mm-hmm. a journey. This was amazing. If you haven't watched Atypical, it's a, it's a family drama comedy uh, tile, style thing. A, about a family who has a kid in high school, two kids in high school, one younger in high school, one older in high school. The one that's older in high school has is on the autism spectrum, and it's just about that. Um, mm-hmm. Got some Michael Rappaport. Um, has the girl from Annihilation. I can't even remember her name. She plays the cancer lady in Annihilation. If you remember her, um, there's none of the other people. None of the rest of the people in this show are really notable in terms of like their pedigree and acting or anything. So nothing like that. But it's just every character is great. 
all of it is great. The mm-hmm. first season is his come up through high school and into graduating. His sec- uh, the second or no, yeah. And then the second season is like graduating, trying to find a college. The third season is like, oh, we're in college, we're figuring stuff out. The fourth season is like, oh, we're getting out of college. It's like all great. It's awesome. Yeah. It's the shit. I can't recommend I it, it enough. I cannot recommend it enough. I kind of want to rewatch it. You want you want to you want to talk Bachelorette spoilers real quick? Sure, dude. Okay. <laughs> this all right. Bachelorette is a bag full of problems. The yeah. show in general. Yeah, oh, we didn't even talk about it. Sexy Beast. We'll do that later. Yeah, I'm, I was going to get to that after this. Oh, okay. Um, they, Hell. she let go the best man, obviously. Mm-hmm. So, swell dude, football player. Yeah. But like the most amazing guy I think I've ever seen on the show. She lets him go just because there was something a little off with the connection. Yeah. And course. that's okay. That's Chemistry, really whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And he has been. I've never seen someone handle the breakup in a bachelorette season as well as he did. Mm-hmm. He was like, hey, um, I he came up after the, the rose ceremony and yes. like hit her up in her room and was like, hey, I, d- I didn't want to go out on a sad note. I've always enjoyed smiling with you, and I want to mm. end smiling with you. Mm. And so he does that. Oh, he's, man. Not, well, he's just a good guy. Yeah. He leaves a note. Leaves says, hey, open this after I leave. Mm-hmm. Um, open to take when care I'm of gone. Yourself. Yeah, yeah. No, no. And he said, if anything happens... I'll be waiting for you. Oh, and it's so sweet. You want to hug, and then like she chases him down. Oh no! And she gives him a hug, and and she's like regretting her decision super hard. And like she said that at the roast ceremony, she was like, "This is the first time I didn't, I wasn't confident mm-hmm. in what I was doing," and and she's like, "If there's a way for you to stay, would you stay?" And he had to make that tough decision. Like, you did break up with me. <laughs> you keep that show. No. So I I need you to see through what you've done. Yeah. And then maybe who knows, but like what a man. It, I've never seen someone handle, yeah, anything on that show as good as he did. And I I, I teared up well. It was okay. good. It was All good. right. And of course we watched the first episode of Sexy Beasts. That show's weird as fucking. That show gave me the opposite feeling of that. Yeah, I don't know. It's a thirty episode whole season of The Bachelor, and and one one episode. one episode. It's so fast and honestly it's structured so poorly. And the narration is the jokes are so they're bad. Bad. There's a whole foot fetish thing in Yeah, he's like, oh, this is for the foot fetish people. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Like, Why are we... What are we doing here? Yeah. What are we... The whole premise. This? The whole premise. There's one person. They're dressed up in some weird mask. And then there's three other contestants who are looking for love. And they're also dressed up in Every, masks. So it's and, take and, looks out of the equation. Yeah. Forget the fact that we're just going to make everyone hot as shit. Yeah, anyway. everybody is still hot when they take off the mask. <laughs> yeah, like, but that's not what matters. Yeah. And uh, it it's not a good show. No, but there's terrible. Some, there's a good clip. It's terrible. There's that a good clip, clip was the still the best thing I've seen of yeah, it so far. I agree. I agree. There's one other thing that I watched though. That really? was old. Oh, yes, I didn't watched write old. it down. That movie is straight spoilers. Garbage. Okay, you want to get into spoilers. Straight. Is this the end of the garbage? Show? Okay. So what's coming soon? Stillwater, Jungle Cruise, and The Green Knight are all out this Friday. I will probably be in the theaters watching The Green Knight. And I might be A24, in the theaters baby. watching Jungle Cruise as well. Really? I don't know. I like Emily Blunt. Mm, I like Dwayne Johnson. I like Emily Blunt. I don't know. Might do it. Stillwater, Matt Damon. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. As Norman residents. I, I, I don't it. think we're allowed to. Yeah, well, maybe. I don't know. Anyway, so that's what's coming out soon. If you don't Re- want spoilers for old, please hop out. But wait, I can wait, wait. Read your mail. Huh? Read your mail. Well, well, the people who will listen through the... Sp- well, maybe yeah. that... Well, what if they... Yeah, what if they fr- What if they love the show but also don't want spoilers for... Okay, okay. Do the reader mail. We'll cap with old. I can assure you, if you haven't seen the movie and you're thinking about watching it, don't waste your time. But anyway, so Spencer writes in, what is your favorite Marvel movie soundtrack? What is your all-time favorite movie soundtrack? Marvel, like MCU? Yep. It's uh, just the Guardians. Black Panther. Oh. It, it's Guardians or Black Panther? It's Kendrick, tough, though. Kendrick was on that Black Panther soundtrack. It's undeniable. It's but, great. But it's tough because, like, the Black Panther soundtrack is all originals. Yeah. The... Um, Guardian's soundtrack is OST. a mixtape. It's just like yeah, um, it's a good mixtape though. It is an amazing mixtape. I will. You if didn't we, say if, OST. You just no. said soundtrack. I then it's a tie for both. I think yeah, because they're so good, mm-hmm. but definitely in different categories. And then of course you got your classic. Doesn't get any better than the the Avengers crescendo. Can you got always get yeah? Shot I think that's the best uh, best uh, main theme. Or yeah, uh, whatever. And then all time favorite movie soundtrack. Into the Spider Verse. Yeah, that's what I was probably about to say. What's up, Danger? That What's alone is just the best. Song from a movie, probably. I like tall buildings so I can leap off of them. It makes you feel like such a badass. Yeah, it's so good. and it makes you want to leap off of them. You know, 
successfully? Have you tried? Like, no, I haven't yet, but mm-hmm. I was thinking about maybe getting into it. Okay. I'll, I'll come with you. I'll record <laughs> you know? it. Anyway, now it's time for spoilers for old. So hop out if you don't want spoilers for old. If you don't care, listen to this shit. So I, we watched old on Friday. Yes. Me and my girlfriend. M. Night Shyamalan. And my sister. We went. Whoa, Pebble went. Pebble was there with us as well. I'm sure she enjoyed that. M. Night Shyamalan. The only enjoyment I got out of this movie was the fact that uh, us three could laugh at the absurdity that is this movie. Mm-hmm. Okay? This movie is the worst movie I have seen in a very long time. That bad. It is garbage. It is terrible. And frankly, I don't know who keeps giving Shyamalan money. Himself. Why? He makes one banger no, out of every has, four. He has, it was Universal. Universal gave him money for this movie. Wh- okay, let's be completely honest. Shyamalan peaked at Signs in the Sixth Sense in the early 2000s. No, and, Spl- Split was pretty good. In the late 90s. Split, Split was, was good. okay. He didn't peak at Split. I mean, so this, No, I don't think it was a peak, but that was, Split yeah. was good. Split is good, but the, pre- the first movie to that is not good, and the second movie to that is terrible. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You're talking about the sequel? The sequel's... No. There's Unbreakable. That's good. And then there's Split. Split's good. And then there's Glass. Glass is not good. And uh, then there's a plethora of just straight garbage misses. Like let Avatar. Me, let me bring up... Avatar The Last Airbender. Let me bring it up. Let me bring up M. Night You Shyamalan. thought he directed Avatar? No. Yeah, I know. But you looked at me like I was talking about that Avatar. M. Night Shyamalan. I don't like that movie either. The Visit... Whoa. The Happening. Oh, wait, and look, yeah. I enjoyed no, the, the Happening. happening right. But it's the a bad movie. He did The Village, right? It's a bad movie. He did After Earth. He did The Village. He did Devil. Hello? Yeah, I like The Village. The village he did good. Devil, the movie in the damn elevator. Terrible movie. Straight garbage. He did After Earth. I'll give him the OG Stuart Little. Whatever. Everyone has their start. Like, dude... And uh, no spoilers for Six Sense because I still haven't watched that and it's on my list. And I How, really wait, that movie hasn't been spoiled for you yet? No, it hasn't been spoiled. That's why I'm saying no spoilers for the Six Sense. All right, I'm no. it's still on my list. Wait, no, true. don't spoil it. Time out. Time out. Can we? When it comes to spoilers, we had this conversation. Yes, with, I agree. How there is a statute of yes, limitations? There is a statute of limitations, but I managed to dodge it, and I need to watch this movie before someone. But how are you? You said too bad. I'm spoiling old. Well, I said because you can hop out, and you guys don't give a shit. I don't want Six Sense to be spoiled because it's on my list. I'm gonna watch it within the next few weeks. I okay. just want I want to say it. Put a date on it. It's the next few weeks. No, put a date. That's on That's gonna be your no. new statute of limitation. It's the next few, few, so a few. Is what? Now, let me get in, back into this movie. You get three weeks. Whatever. Three weeks. So here we go. Um, M Night Shyamalan somehow keeps getting money and he keeps making these shit movies. Um, and Old is another one of those shit movies. I why, dude? Why? Oh my god. Okay, front. There's so many things in this. You go to the think, beach. You no, age rapidly. I think. Uh, the concept is highbrow and fantastic, and I think it could have been executed well. And I think the ending was the best part of the movie and the most mm-hmm. intriguing part of the movie. But up until that point, I felt like I was watching a movie from an amateur director. Some of the shots, compositions, and some of the dialogue lines. Dude, M. Night Shyamalan needs to hire an editor, bro. Because mm-hmm. some of the interactions between the characters was like, what? There was this weird infatuation with occupations the entire movie. Right, there's a scene in the middle of the movie where they go up onto a body that was there, but it's no longer a body because everything is as fast, right? And it's decomposed and it's ske- mm-hmm. and it's like a skeleton. And they come up and they're like, "Oh shit, how long? How long has it been? It couldn't have decomposed this fa- fast." And the lady comes up and she goes, "I manage a museum. I think about seven months." And I was like, "You manage a museum? Why the? Why did you say that?" So it's it's prefacing her yeah, expertise. Yeah, no, it's so stupid. She's qualified. It's so stupid. Now I have a question. Do things only age fast when I, my, myself, the viewer, is not looking at them? No, I'll, I'll get there. I'll get there. Okay. Okay, so the premise of the movie, you got a family that's on vacation. Yeah. A mom, a dad, two kids. They go on mm-hmm. vacation. They get a really good deal. The leader of the resort, leader, the guy of the resort is like, hey, I got this secluded beach that you guys can get on, right? And mm-hmm. I only give it to my special guests. Y'all should come. I'll take y'all over there. Boom. M. Night Shyamalan, the bus driver, right? Of course. You're driving the people to the beach. They go to the beach. The, the movie takes way too long to get there. The, there's these weird interactions between all the people in the resort. The kid has this infatuation with occupations again, which, by the way, never pays off. I don't know why we keep asking people their occupations. The word occupation is uttered probably 30 to 40 times in the script. I do not know why we keep asking people I think about you're their too small, Brian. Dude, 
whatever. There's got to be a big brand. So the kid keeps walking up to people. No, this is the reason they ask about occupations. It'll come back in the ending in this movie. It is stupid. So he walks up and he's like, "Oh, what's your name and occupations? What's your name and occupations?" And he asks this to everybody he sees, right? So that's the whole thing. But anyway, they get to the beach. There's other people there. There's a rapper who was there with a the girl who's now missing. <gasps> Yes, his rap name is Mid-Sized Sedan. <laughs> Pretty good. Everybody, no, nobody asks good. him what his real name is. They just keep calling him Mid-Sized Sedan. Okay. The whole movie. I'm with it. He ends up saying later in the movie, like, my name's Roger or something. And they keep just calling him Mid-Sized Sedan. Whatever. It's, it's, it's a mild thing. It's a mm -hmm. mild issue. So we get to the beach. There's a rapper and this girl that's there that's now missing, yeah. right? And then there's... A doctor and his trophy wife and their daughter. Then there's the two, the mom, the dad, and the two kids. Mm -hmm. And then there's the the dad that has a trophy wife. He also has a grandma with a dog. And then there's this um, this Korean guy. Well, I guess I'm making an assumption. This Asian guy and this this uh, African American lady that come up onto the beach. And they're like a married couple in their like 50s, right? Yeah. And they're all chilling on the beach. Everything's going fine. We're all vibing. Mm -hmm. The guy gives them a plethora of food for some reason. We find out later why that happens. Kids, when they age, they got to eat. So yeah. that's why all the food's there. They get to the beach, they're swimming. A body washes up. It's the lady that was with the rapper. We've seen them earlier in the movie. The rapper's like, dude, she was here. She swam way out there. She disappeared, and now she's dead. I don't know what's going on, right? And the rapper's nose is like constantly bleeding. Uh, bleeding. This is mid sized sedan, by the way. Mm -hmm. The doctor, if, it starts to seem like he's racist because he's like, you, you, this guy makes me feel unsafe or whatever because he's like talking about him. Mm -hmm. they, they don't know what's going on. Shit starts getting weird. Someone's like, oh, I'm going to go find help. They try to go back the way they came. They get all dizzy. They come tripping back in. They're like, okay. oh, man, we can't like get out. And they do it a couple times. Like, man, we can't get out. What's this going is on? all pretty much stuff yeah. from the trailer. Yeah, it's like, oh, dude, we can't get out, right? <laughs> We're about halfway through the movie now. Then the kids have aged, right? The yeah. kids are like 14, 12. Something like that when they they were like six or whatever and like because yeah. they're talking to the to the the older couple off screen of course right yeah okay. yeah they're talking to the older couple and they're like no for real tell us your real age like tell us your real age right and that's like a whole thing and then the mom like sees them and it's like what you're our kid and then they're like what's going on and then they go back and they're like dude we can't get out of here we can't nobody can leave we're all gonna and then a bunch of them try to leave at the same time they all pass out they all come back they all stumble back in they don't know what's going on and they're like dude we can't get out of here. And then she's the mom's like, it's a virus. It has to be a virus. And I'm like, dude, your kids are fucking, they're older, dude. They're older. Like, what are mm -hmm. you talking about? Whatever. We get to the body scene that I was talking about, right? We find the body. Oh, I'm a museum. I'm a, mu I manage a museum, dude. Oh, you know, it's all thing. This isn't the ocean body? This is the ocean body. Oh, okay. And he's like, oh, what? And then they, they're like freaking out. Then they go back. The grandma starts hyperventilating. Grandma dies. Yeah. Like, what, what the heck? Grandma's dead. And the, doc, the doctor is tripping. And the, here's a dialogue line in the movie. The dog dies, right? And then the lady comes up. She's like, she's like, honey, our dog's dead. And he's like, what? It was only just alive. That's a real line. That's a good line. That's a real line from the movie, right? So the dog dies. What? <clears throat> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's such a dumb. Yeah, they're fighting earlier in the movie in the like the the re re resort room or whatever. And he's like, honey, uh, what is she, what is a... Uh, you got to stop living in the past. No, that's not how it goes. It, no, she's like, oh, you're always thinking about the future, right? And then he's like, you work at a museum. You're always thinking about the past. It's like a whole thing. It's like, what the fuck? It's so weird. Anyway, cut back to the beach. They go back to the body. We find out, oh, and then the, 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 the Asian guy's like, guys, I think something's going on with time on this beach when we've seen the decomposed body, right? Yeah. And the mom's like... I don't know. And then mid-sized sedan's like, bruh. Right? It's like a weird thing. Mm -hmm. um, what even happens after that? People start getting more wrinkles. The kids get even older. Right? Yeah. Um, the kid gets the other girl pregnant. Right? Because there's three kids. There's the brother, the sister, and then the other kid. How the, long are they on this island at this point? That We've been here maybe three hours. And he's already got another girl pregnant? Yeah, because he's like, he's going through puberty now. Right? Oh. And so... They do it, but she's like nine months pregnant instantaneously yeah. because they've somehow masked it out at this point that 30 minutes is a year. I don't know how they came to that conclusion. Whatever. We're, they're just explaining the movie to the viewers, bro. Yeah. How did he get there? I do not know. There's the rule. Okay. That's the rule. So she, she's pregnant, has the baby. They give birth. Baby dies instantaneously. Why? Not enough attention. You know, because babies need a lot of attention, and because it's real fast, they can't get enough attention because you can't give it to them enough because time is too fast. That's why so, the so baby yes. died. So the baby died because it couldn't get enough attention. 
That's what they say in the movie. Okay. Anyway, fast forward. You know, everyone's like a little older now. You now you got the kid from Hereditary. He's in, um, and the sister. Everybody's tripping out. Um, who's died at this point? Uh, I think just the grandma and the baby. The girl who had the baby is like, screw this. I'm climbing the rocks. I'm gonna yeah. climb the rocks. She gets to the top of the rocks, pass out, falls down, dies. Causes the mom to go crazy. The trophy wife who has a calcium deficiency, so her bones are all messed up, and she's now a hunchback because her her disease has spread so much, right? Mm-hmm. So she's like a hunchback, and she's like, oh, she goes into the cave. Don't look at, don't look at me, right? The doctor guy goes crazy, murders mid-sized sedan with a knife, right? And they take the knife away from him, and he goes and hides in the darkness or whatever. They find out, oh, there's cameras. Someone must be watching us, right? They see mm-hmm. the like, Oh, what, who's going on? What's going on? Right? Then, fast forward some more. You get the kids are like searching around in the dirt, the dirt, the dirt, the dirt, the dust and dirt, the yeah. sand. They find out they found a journal. In the journal, somehow someone who was here before has completely solved it all. Right? Mm-hmm. It's a list of people who have went missing, and it's exactly what's happening. So what's happening? According to the guy in the random journal who managed to come up on the beach, he left it in the journal. A concentration of a certain mi- of certain minerals from the earth, because of like evolution and the nature of the earth and asteroids, has caused a certain concentration of minerals to land on this beach, which has caused a focal point of electromagnetism, which causes everyone's cells to accelerate in terms of their their speed. Right. Okay. That's why everyone ages fast. How do you figure this out? It doesn't fucking matter. It doesn't matter. It's not a big deal. It's, I don't know. I don't know, dude. <laughs> and then, okay, then the, the psycho dude goes crazy. You know what they do? They slice him with a rusty knife. What does that do? Oh, it causes poison to go through his body real fast because it's yeah. a rusty knife. Oh, it's really fast, right? But they got to explain that to you. So like, she slices him, and she's like, I sliced you with a rusty knife, which is going to cause you to get poisoned, and it's going to go through your body extremely fast. She literally says that, like, out loud. In the movie, and it's like that okay. has to be explained. To you. You're just, a dumb viewer. Just explain it all, whatever. Yeah. Okay. And the kids go hide in the cave because the guy was going psycho. They find the lady who's going crazy, but she ends up falling and she, her bones are all messed up, so she breaks her arm. Mm-hmm. And they end up healing back super fast, so they heal in weird positions. And so she's like, "That was that actual creepy part of the movie when yeah. her bones were all super screwed up." That was, was kind of cool. Then they come back out. The mom and the dad, the two kids, they're chilling. Everybody else is dead at this point, right? The the, the Asian guy decided, "I'm gonna swim out," right? This is a real line of the movie. He's like, we got to swim 150 meters against the current. And then it shows the current. And it's like, it's just destroying the mm-hmm. rocks. And it's like, dude, no one's going to be able to do it. And he goes, I was on the swing team in high school. I think I can do this. Is he like 50? Yeah. Yeah, he's like 55. Okay. Yeah. It's whatever. So he swims. He ends up dying, right? Yeah. Of course, walks back up to the beach. Then the, the, the black lady, ter- it turns out she has an epilepsy problem. She has like an epilepsy. She has like a bunch of super rapid epileptic seizures. Excuse me. She dies. Right? And it's the mom and the dad, the two kids. They sit on the beach. Mom and dad die of old age during the night. Boom. The kids wake up. They're like 45 now in the morning. They're like, let's build a sandcastle. We're building a sandcastle. Right? Now, I'm going to reference something earlier in the movie that I forgot to mention, but I'm going to go back to it now. So they build the sandcastle, and he's like, oh, you know what? That kid gave me this, this thing that I never deciphered, right? Because earlier in the movie, he had met with the kid of the resort owner, and they were friends, and they were passing notes back and forth to each other. They were like, in, they were like ciphers, and they would have to mm-hmm. decipher. And he's like, I got this random note that I never deciphered. And she's like, well, just decipher it. They build the same castle. He deciphers it. And it's like, shows it to the camera. It says, my uncle doesn't like the coral, right? They look out on the horizon. There's some coral. Like, what's going on? So they swim out to the coral. They go to swim. Though they find a tube in the coral, right? And this is an important exposition. Why? Because, you know, was I talking to you about Faraday cages the other day? I can't remember. I was definitely talking to Adrian about Faraday cages. Basically, the kid somehow, even though he's six years old mentally, understands electromagnetic radiation and what it's doing to his cells and understands that what he needs to do is get into a metal tube in order to, because what a Faraday cage does is it's a cage made out of conductive metals that keeps electromagnetic radiation from getting in. That's a real thing. That's why you don't have phone service in the middle of a Dollar General. Okay? Yeah. That's a Faraday cage. So he, he somehow has this knowledge. Okay. Right? And so they find a tube of coral, which is going to work as a natural Faraday cage. Keep in mind, this breaks the rules of their movie already. Why? Because they come to the conclusion, the Asian guy comes to the conclusion, the reason they can't walk back the way they came is because their bodies can't acclimate to going from super fast back to super slow, and that's why they get all weird and come back, right? Yeah. So somehow we're going to go through a tube and turn it from 100 to zero and not pass out at all. Whatever. It doesn't fucking make any sense. We're not going to talk about that. It's cool. It's whatever. Mm-hmm. Moving on. They go to swim through the tube. They get caught up in the tube. They make it like they're dead. Of course, they're not dead. But they make it like they're dead. Cuts back. M. Night Shyamalan, he's looking at the camera. It's a bit of irony. You know, it's kind of cool. Yeah. Um, and then he goes back. And this is where the movie, like the whole time, I'm like, God, this is terrible. But then I finally get to a point. I know I've been rambling for a long time. But I finally get to a point where it's like, oh, this is actually interesting. So they go back, and it turns out what it is is a medical company called, I can't remember, Warren Medical or whatever, has found this beach that causes people to accelerate their cell growth. And what they do is they put out these things. 
things, and this is just a complete red herring. Because you think it has something to do with occupations or something weird. No. They put out these things to people who they know are sick and their families that have these conditions. They develop a medicine for that condition. They give them that medicine in the form of a cocktail when they get to the resort. And they send them to the beach to see the accelerated speed of it and see if it works. Right? Okay. Right? And so they get back and they're like, moment of silence for trial number 78. Everybody has a minute long silence. And they're like, okay, you know, people are, you know, we're trying to develop these medicines. We, we did really good with epilepsy because the girl didn't have an epileptic seizure until really late in the movie, which means she went technically from like 50 to like 80 without having an epileptic seizure based on the medicine they gave them. So like, we basically made a cure for epilepsy. Let's get this into human testing. Let's send it out there. You know, they sacrifice their lives, but they're going to save millions, right? And I'm sitting here, I'm like, honestly, it's unethical. Interesting premise. But also, personally, I don't think it's that bad. I don't, I don't think it's that bad. That's just me. Uh-huh. They're going to die anyway. For science, man. For science. That's just me. It's unethical, definitely, for sending, out them, sending them out there without telling them. But so also, the kids' disease. The kids, it's just collateral. So it was the parents' disease. The parents was the, the lady had uh, cancer. Uh, the mom had cancer. Uh, the dad had, like, glaucoma. Right? The, they end up, I forgot to tell you about that. They end up cutting her cancer out. It's like a whole thing. Oh. Um, then the one girl had epilepsy. The doctor had um, schizophrenia. Okay. The one girl had the calcium deficiency in this thing. And then uh, Mr. 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 Dan, he had blood clots. That's why his nose was always bleeding. Okay. Right? So you find out, like, oh. And then the guy's like, oh, we shouldn't mix the mental health patients with the actual physical disability patients because the the um, the schizophrenic patient cost us our data on the blood clot patient because he murders them. It's the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so I'm like, all right, we're going to send out the epilepsy medicine. We're going to get into real human testing. We've made a cure. It's all good. This is great. Cut back. Turns out they did make it through the coral. They didn't die. They show up. You get the next round of people. They walk up, slap the cocktails, like, don't drink anything. He goes back. He has the book that has all the missing people. Hands it to the uh, the cop. This is why we kept asking about co- occupations. Because of the one guy that was a cop, right? He knew he was a cop because he asked him earlier in the movie, what's your name and occupation? Oh, I'm a policeman. So he knows that. Hands him the book. The policeman's like, these are all missing people? He he, re- he rectifies it with his people. He doesn't ask any questions about this guy who claims he was 50 and claims to be six, right? Yeah. He takes it in stride. He's like, oh, yeah, that checks out. Like, oh, because of the book, the missing people. Like, uh, yeah, whatever, right? They bust him. They arrest everybody. They fly a helicopter. They look at the beach. Why did we fly a helicopter over here? I don't know. But the cop is with the two kids who are now 50-something. And he's like, yeah, this is the beach. And he's like, man, you almost went through hell. Like, what, uh, you know. Your so aunt- they went back on the beach? No, they didn't. They were oh. flying a helicopter. And he's like, yeah, you know, your aunt, why, your aunt reacted pretty badly. And the kid in the back's like, yeah, what would you do if someone who was 50 called you and said, or someone who was six called you and said they were 50? And then he's like, yeah, good point. And then they fly off. That's the movie. It sounds great to me. <laughs> that movie's so bad. And I thought the premise was like actually good once you get into the ending and they start talking about the medical stuff. I was like, this is cool. So I think the problem is M. Night can come up with an interesting twist, but can't He can't direct. execute. He, can't execute. No, he needs direct. an editor. He needs someone who writes the dialogue for him. The dialogue is so bad. Yeah. Bad movie. Yeah, terrible. Interesting idea. Three out of ten. I know I just ranted for like 14 minutes. It's okay. You got to edit it. Not me tonight. Mm-hmm. But that's it. That's it, that's it for this episode of the podcast. We're going to get to the post show now. If you support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash up for $5. You get 